Front with Chris Denham. cause for panic, it's just the local doctor making a house call. Okay, Robert, they do that kind go, of thing right? at yep. sea where there's rather more to a GP's life than crowded surgeries and filling in prescriptions. For Dr Phil Burnett, this is all part of learning to understand his patients a little better. Not that they're all likely to jump into the ogin of high-speed boats, but as deputy to the Penley lifeboat doctor, it can be a useful experience. Phil's first training session is literally a baptism by fire, water and air. In a real-life emergency at sea, there are no comfortable rides to be had in warm ambulances. The only way out is by lifeboat and helicopter, and if Phil is going to put his patients through it, he ought to know firsthand what it feels like. In the water, it was, you're really concentrating on the cold and the fact that I was disorientated for the best part of 30 seconds. And the helicopter was a little bit nerve-wracking, it's uh, not really used to being airborne. What did you learn from the experience? Well, firstly, good fun. And secondly, I think it's quite important just to be familiar with what's going on out here. So that at least in the real situation, you weren't perhaps thinking in the back of your mind that there was a hoist coming which you weren't familiar with. Or perhaps when you're hoisting somebody on board, you weren't really sure what it would entail or what it would feel like for them. Another part of the job is to train the lifeboat crew in first aid. The senior doctor and long-time member of the crew is Mike Hersant. Medicine's the same anywhere, uh, whether you're at sea or, or on land, but the circumstances are different. The illnesses are the same, but the conditions in which you're treating people are indeed different. They're, they're, they're harder, there are things going on around you, waves and cold and the like. Having had his swim and a flight, Phil is put to the test in a full-blown exercise. A small yacht is in trouble with two people injured after a fire on board. The skipper has radioed for help and the lifeboat responds. This is the medic speaking, this is the doctor. Would you give us details of your situation, please? The chap who is with me, Roger, he's, he's been badly burnt. And uh, the girl is with us as well, she's been burnt as well there. I've got a boat there, they're pretty bad. Roger, understood. We're fairly close now. In the meantime, you could use some cold and clean water just to sprinkle onto any burn sites, but I would advise no further action until we come alongside. We have to, we have to climb ashore from the woodshed. So Fortunately, the sea is calm and the victims are local volunteers from the casualties union, heavily made up with realistic looking injuries. Phil wasn't given any indication of what to expect, now has to treat his patients as best as possible in what is a far cry from the comparative comfort and sophistication of his normal surgery. Mr. Skipper, what happened exactly? Can you tell us? Yeah, we had a fire down there. Um, it's a mess. And he just he got it all over him. Um, he tried to get out of the way. And he just tripped over, and he banged his head, and he landed across the table. Yeah. And Tina went down to get him out. Yeah. And uh, she sort of beat all the flames out. And yeah. Okay, now we'll need the stretcher. Please. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
his head that's got to be watched. Someone take his head up there. Transferring a stretcher from boat to boat is always tricky and not usually allowed on exercise. I want you to stay with this girl, right? Stay with Tina. Down to the half deck again. Right, watch his head, somebody. Somebody's got his head. In fact, I'll take that. If one of you would go and get the Entinox and then bring it back up and we'll apply that. And we're going to get a drip up now. All right. You ready? Keep your head still, you're all right now. All right, just hold that up at that height, that's your job. All right, that's the drip running. Where's the end, Sinox, please? While the doctor on board deals with the patient, the man who is ultimately in charge is the lifeboat coxswain. In the case of the Penn Lee boat, that's Ken Thomas. I think we'd better get this guy on board back to Newlyn as soon as possible and into an ambulance. We're bringing her first as well, just for the time. But is it alright by you to leave this boat? I don't know what... Um, can you put a man on board? Right, lovely. I'll leave that with you. No. The exercise ends with both patients safely aboard, where they can wash off the makeup, the casualty yacht in the hands of a lifeboat crewman, and the new lifeboat medic reflecting on the very different problems of treatment at sea. Phil, from your point of view, how did it go? I was very impressed. It felt very realistic. It was um, a little difficult to start with to decide how much to do on the small boat, and I fairly quickly decided that time was better spent up on the, the main lifeboat having assessed things as best I could. What sort of lessons do you think you've learned from all this? I think to, well that, that lesson especially, to, to use your time, maximise use of time, and also to, to remember that there is more than one casualty, and perhaps the interview with the um, skipper on the way to the scene um, taught me that perhaps he won't tell you everything that's happened in, at the heat <laughs> of the moment. Well Ken, how realistic was that exercise do you think? Well, considering it was a new dock, fairly realistic. Uh, most of our jobs, to be honest, are with bigger boats. But, uh, you know, one fire out. And did he do a good job? I don't know, you better ask the other <laughs> dock. <laughs> I'm just a driver. Mike, how do you think he did? It was jolly good. Uh, there's a lot more going on, isn't there, Phil? Uh, oh, yes, yeah, that's than just, right. just the injured people. Um, and I think that's the big lesson, that you're part of a team, uh, you've got your medicine to do, but you've also got to be uh, able to be a seaman, really. The RNLI is always looking for more doctors to volunteer for training. They're also, subject to getting the money, hoping to replace the Anstruther lifeboat in Scotland, a boat called the Doctors. <laughs>